So, Micmac mail number 15. I had a few packages delivered. I think it's going to be a fairly long mailbag segment. So let's start with the biggest one first. I know where this one came from. It's one of my fairly recent patrons uh, from patreon.com and I helped him out. I spent a fair bit of time helping him out with a VPN setup. And one of the other ways he thanked me was to uh, send me uh, a bit of a care package. For a living he'll test a whole lot of products uh, and so he sent me some Wi-Fi access points because uh, two of my access points died in a lightning strike and one of them was, ended up being fairly dodgy. So he sent me some uh, business grade access points which is absolutely fantastic. So uh, thank you very much Stephen for that. It's going to be absolutely fantastic to get these up and running and fix my dodgy wireless access points. These are fairly uh, decent uh, units, these access points. They're uh, what's called business grade access points. So they're all uh, completely fully managed. This is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much again, Stephen. And these are gonna be a fantastic addition. It all improved the uh, wireless connectivity incredibly. So fantastic. Thanks very much, mate. And um, I'm absolutely glad to help you uh, out any time. All right, excellent. I'm looking forward to that. I might get those going this weekend. So the next one, uh, next biggest one. Uh, I don't know where this one came from. In fact, I haven't bothered to look up any of these items. So I don't know what, what they are, where they came from. I really need to get myself a better opener. Okay, so espresso bin. Um, this is a recent Kickstarter and they contacted me uh, during the week, or I think a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they sent me an espresso bin for review. Not only that, I asked them if I'd send a second unit uh, that I could use as a competition. So stay tuned for that competition that's going to be coming up. Um, I'll be giving away an espresso bin at some stage. So let's uh, crack open this and see what it looks like. So the espresso bin is powered by a Compaq Armada 3700 sock and it's up, I think it's up to 1.2 gigahertz. Um, it's got a networking switch, like a Topaz networking switch. Um, what else has it got? SATA port, um, DC jack, which is so much better than having a micro USB. Uh, this is a JTAG connector. Uh, what else has it got on board? Uh, 2 gigs DDR3 RAM uh, SD slot, uh, onboard EMC. It's got two GPIO headers, which is absolutely fantastic. If you look at the GPIOs, there's a lot of differences to Raspberry Pi, lots of PWMs, straight GPIO pins, a couple of things it's lacking, I can see straight off. It's missing MIPI CSI and DSI. Um, what else is it missing? Um, wireless. You can always add a wireless card uh, via the PCIe interface. As I mentioned before, it's got a Topaz network switch, so it's got three gigabit Ethernet ports, uh, USB 2, USB 3, so that'll be interesting and what would be even more interesting is running a video card off the PCI interface. So uh, also the other thing that's missing is HDMI, there's no HDMI. So it's designed as really a headless board. So this would be quite an interesting board. I need to get a PCI graphics card uh, and try this out and also try it out on the other boards I have with those uh, with that sort of interface. So comparing it to a Raspberry Pi it's probably slightly bigger uh, than a Pi. Uh, of course, the number of GPIOs, you've got a whole bunch of extra GPIOs here, plus this side as well. So there's a lot of GPIOs. It's really more comparable to a Latte Panda uh, or an upboard, but it's running an ARM uh, processor, not a x86 processor. The one really nice feature is having a DC jack input as opposed to um, these USB ports which are, they're really dodgy. Excellent! So stay tuned for when I release the competition for the second espresso bin. Alright next up so the next one I have 
Once again, I have no idea where this has came from, but it came from Poland. So I suspect this might be something from Tindy. So the RG Shield is uh, basically a board that can fit into a breadboard and it allows you to connect uh, a Uno, a Micro, a Nano, Mini, Mini Pro um, uh, to this and it breaks out all the connections so you can just chuck it into a breadboard. Uh, all the labels are on there so you know where they are. It's also got a little LED I think on there so it's actually quite a good little board but I think this is a spot for an AT Tiny as well. Uh, I need a breadboard, where's my breadboard? It just slots on, on like this and the other good thing is that you have access to uh, the power rails as well so you can put the power rails along there and away you go so it's a, a nice little board uh, the other thing is you've also got a uh, header completely so you can chuck on a Arduino on the base so there you go it fits in you know really nicely there's enough gap there for it to fit on and you can just plug everything in and just break out everything so it's quite handy so that's the RG Shield. that's from awesome PCB store on Tindy so thanks for that. Okay, so next. Ah, nice. So this one came from DF Robot, and I asked for a couple of items for a project that I've got coming up, which is the alarm clock. So these items were for this uh, project that was going to be last weekend. Unfortunately, they didn't arrive in time for me to, to complete the project. Uh, so there's two, two items. Uh, one was a, a fire beetle, uh, so this is a fire beetle uh, LED, LED display and the other one is the actual fire beetle as well. So the fire beetle is an ESP32 based board, uh, fairly similar to um, Adafruit's Hazar. Uh, it's got a LiPo battery management support as well. This is a hat that goes on top which uh, provides a whole lot of LEDs on it, a fairly dense format. So, uh, so these two will be great for that project that I've got coming up, which is uh, the alarm clock. I made an, a small talking alarm clock uh, that back in uh, sort of mid uh, 1980s, and it was based on pulse width modulation. Uh, There's no D to A converter. It was just a basic board running on an 8051 MCU, and it paged in the sound samples from uh, EEPROM. So that was quite an interesting project, but I wanted to revamp it and bring it into the next century or next millennium. Uh, and this is uh, one, two of the items that I needed for this project. So the project will be next week. So DF Robot have plenty of examples to uh, go off. And uh, this particular example just displays a nice simple scrolling text. So that's pretty good, um, works quite well. So thank you for that DF Robot. And that will be really good to see. Okay, so next up, um, I suspect this is a t-shirt. In fact, I'm fairly confident this is a t-shirt from my Instructables competition um, that I entered into. Uh, this is the competition I entered in, which is the IOT, and I entered my letterbox. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Instructables. So the next one, let's crack this open. Okay, so this is interesting. I wonder what this one is. I need to find out what this is. I can't remember what it is. Okay, so I just had a look up. Uh, this was sent by Chris Weiner from Pesky Products Tindy Shop, uh, and it's a 52832 development board. It's quite a nice little tiny board. Uh, so the NRF52832 uh, MCU uh, is quite a nice little board. It's a lot faster. I think it's four times faster than the NRF51 series. So I requested this board of Pesky Products or Chris Weiner from Pesky Products uh, as I had a particular project in mind uh, which is something to do with a recent fad. Of course it uh, has uh, LiPo support and an IMU and altitude sensor so it fits the bill perfectly for what I wanted to do with it. So this particular board can't be programmed through USB like uh, a lot of other boards. So it requires an ST-Link to program it or J-Link adapter. So I don't have one of those. However, I do have a video coming up on how to use a Raspberry Pi as an alternative to program boards such as this. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so on to the next thing. Now before we go, there was one last package that was uh, just sent to me. So let's crack it open. 
So I'm pretty sure I know what this one is. It's coming from the Yudu guys. This was actually the board that I uh, was offered as a review unit. Uh, the other one, uh, as you would have seen in my review video, uh, that one was actually one I purchased. Uh, so the Yudu guys uh, decided to send me this one as a review unit. And why can't I get these boxes open? Far out. It's pretty similar to the other one, um, but uh, this one is the Ultra and it contains 8 gigs of EMC. And really you wouldn't know much difference between the two. Uh, so very similar layout to the previous model, uh, just with additional RAM. So it'd be good to try this one out. It's not much difference to the previous model that I have, uh, except for extra RAM really and EMC. Now I did have a concern with SATA performance. So uh, they've given me a whole lot of extra bits and pieces. Um, okay, yep, that's nice. Uh, so a proper um, acrylic enclosure, which I'll try that one out. I think this might be. Okay, so this is a SATA M2, uh, 128 gigs. I'd really like to try the performance out on this and see how that performs as well. And what else have we got here? I think this might be just SATA cables, I think. Oh yep, SATA cables. And I don't know what this is. Okay, so more cables. Oh, these are the aerials, uh, antennas, and also a Wi-Fi module. So they've given me a 3168 Intel Wi-Fi module, which is a fairly standard module you can get. Drivers will, won't be an issue for it at all. Um, I'll check out both uh, performance uh, using the supplied aerials as well as uh, using a proper aerial as well. Um, they've also given me an HDMI cable. I'm actually running out of HDMI cables too. Uh, so it'd be handy. And uh, what else are they giving me? Oh, so fan module as well, active cooling. So that'd be good to try all those out. So they've given me a whole range of stuff uh, to test out. Uh, so the Wi-Fi module, uh, I'll be able to try the active cooling on the uh, Udu Ultra. Uh, they've also given me uh, additional SATA cables, which is good. So I had some issues with my SATA disk tests you know, in my first review of the Udu. I think my SATA disk was, uh, there's something wrong with it, essentially. So I'm going to retry my SATA tests with uh, using both the SSD and also an external disk, which is a little bit better. Uh, so stay tuned for that particular review. So there we have it. The, um, we have the Wi-Fi routers from Stephen, who's one of my patrons. So thanks very much, uh, Stephen, for that. They are going to be absolutely invaluable to me. Um, we also have the Espresso Bin Kickstarter, which was funded um, in November 2016. So I've got a review of that coming up, uh, depending on my patron voting. Um, there's also the RG Shield, uh, which is an Indiegogo campaign. Um, it was funded back in October 2016. We've also got the uh, Fire Beetle, uh, which comes from DF Robot. Uh, there's also the NRF 52832 from Pesky Products on uh, the Tindy store. And also this Udu X86 Ultra model, uh, which I'll definitely put uh, through its paces to see how the uh, SATA performs. That's it. Thanks very much for watching. See you next week.